glad everybody's out there. And uh, hopefully if you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section. We'll be able to get to them. Um, feel free to ask us anything about mortgages or real estate or, you know, what you have on your mind as it relates to uh, finding a house in Toronto, which is proving to be very difficult this fall. There's been a lot of competition in the marketplace and there's a lot of things uh, going over asking. We are seeing a bit of an uptick in mortgage rates, according to our expert here, Jerome Trail. And um, we have a number of questions that we're going to ask Jerome. And Jerome is going to uh, um, hopefully give us the answers we're looking for. And maybe you can give us a little bit of a background about yourself there, Jerome, so we uh, know who we're talking to and uh, what your expertise are. Sure. Thank you, Jethro. I'm happy to, to be here this morning. Thank you for having me. So we have a, an independent brokerage. We have a team of approximately 12 people. We have nine agents or, or licensed brokers that are able to help applicants. We have a, an internal team of three, a couple of administrators. We have uh, a proprietary software system. It's a digital version of the mortgage trail that allows buyers to track their file as they go through the mortgage and buying process. Anyway, we are an independent brokerage. We have no affiliation with any one lender. We have access to many lenders, probably close to 50 or 60. In reality, we probably deal with 12 to 15 on an annual basis. Our goal on every file is to try and take the client to an institutional solution and really assess what their overall needs are, educate them along the way, and make sure that we're putting them into the right mortgage product. Cool. Wow. Well, there uh, looks like you guys do quite a bit of work over there. Um, <clears throat> you certainly have a big team, and uh, it would be good to see that uh, that software to sort of track how the mortgage process goes. Um, so, talking about mortgages a little bit here, what are what are kind of the different types of mortgages that are available to people? And um, I know there's fixed and variable, but there's probably also some B lenders out there. Uh, and what are those about? Um, why don't we talk a little bit about what's going on in the uh, fixed and variable mortgage uh, market in terms of different types of mortgages? As you've just mentioned, the two, the two major uh, sections or types of mortgages are variable. A variable means that it's quoted relative to the bank's prime lending rate. The bank's prime lending rate gets their lead from the Bank of Canada. Hence, as the Bank of Canada moves their prime lending rate up or down, that impacts variable rate mortgages. Right. For many, many years, that was shown to be historically the least expensive way to borrow money. There was a university, of, a York University prof, Mosh Molesky, did an extensive study. He looked at interest rates over a span of about 25 years, concluded had you gone variable, you would have saved money. However, that analysis was done in an era of much higher annualized interest rates. And it's really, the study's not been applicable to the interest rate environment that we've enjoyed over the last few years. The yeah, which has been historically low, sorry. Which has been historically low. Incredibly low. So the other type of mortgage product, it's a fixed rate mortgage. What does that mean? It means that the interest rate, and hence your minimum payment, the minimum payment is monthly, those are set, they're established, they're locked in for the duration, which is known as the term of the mortgage. The most commonly quoted term of a mortgage in Canada is five years. So the, the five-year fixed has, has basically uh, been at the very bottom of the historical rates in the last basically two years since we went into COVID. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, it's been been on the decline for quite some time, which has been mm -hmm. crazy for the housing market for sure. We've uh, seen when mortgage. We always tell, or at least I always tell my clients that the biggest lever we have is uh, is mortgage rates. So as soon as that number changes, we see that it directly affects the um, the lending ability of consumers. And we actually spoke about that last week in last week's show how it was. Uh, I think you said a 0.25 basis point increase represented a 3% increase in your uh, monthly mortgage uh, payments. 
So that's a 3% purchasing power um, scenario, I guess. It impacts way. people's cash flow, hence their affordability, what they're able to carry on a monthly basis. Right. The last thing, Jethro, I'd like to mention, I, I've just described those two major buckets, the variable and the fixed, all of the other styles of mortgage, reverse mortgage, a home equity line of credit, uh, a second mortgage, those are all different types of variable or fixed rate mortgages. Right, right. Yeah, and the and there's, the like you say, there's what they call HELOCs or home equity line of credit. Um, there's also reverse mortgages. So there's a lot depending on a client specific need. Um, right. Well, that rolls nicely into what we should probably talk about next is, so how do you choose a mortgage that's right for your client? Um, I guess it depends it, it, on their circumstances, but you know, and there's a lot of variables out there, but you know, how do you go about it? So Jethro lenders invariably, they advertise the lowest possible rate mortgage product that they have. Basically just to let people know that they are competitive. When you go through the process, the number of people that actually qualify for that very low uh, advertised rate, it's minimal. Right. Really, it comes down to a, a bit of an analysis and a discussion. Let's talk about your needs, and then let's talk about what solutions exist. It's, it's, very, it's very easy for people to fall into that trap, I'll call it, of trying to focus on a low, low rate, as opposed to, you know something, in two years' time, my car is coming off a lease, I need to buy a new vehicle, that's going to cost about $40,000. We've actually got a little bit of a water leak in our basement. We need to spend about $50,000 to waterproof our basement. Those are really the bigger conversations. Many people are carrying a lot of, of consumer debt. When I, what do I mean when I say that? Credit cards, they range from an interest rate of 9.99 up to 24.99. Uh, lines, unsecured lines of credit, they're typically in the seven, 8% interest rate range. It, it behooves people to take those debts, roll them into their, their mortgage, and it will improve their cash flow immediately, and it will drop their, their cost of borrowing over the long term. Uh, and really, that's what it's all about. You need to take a look at people's needs, take a look at their situation, discuss what's coming up, what they have, uh, and then really put in place the right mortgage solution. Right on. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's uh, it's obviously going to be a tailored approach to people's individual needs. There's also, I guess, people have dual income. Some people have single incomes. It really depends on where people are at and at their stage in life and uh, and what they're doing. If it's a first time home or if they're even downsizing, um, I always recommend people protect their properties with a um, uh, a HELOC on their property so to secure the title. So that way, you know, we can prevent against some mortgage fraud too, especially if people are stepping down, which uh, from a big house into a smaller house and don't have any mortgages. <clears throat> but um, that's something you could probably help with too. So um, the rates, we talked a little bit about rates before. Um, and recently there's been some information in the news about the bond yields. Uh, how are mortgage rates really determined um, for, I guess, the Bank of Canada, but also for the individual institutions like the banks and your lenders, because I know there's slightly different parts to that scenario. Well, you've got the variable rate mortgage, and that is dictated by the Bank of Canada. The chartered banks, as the name implies, there there's the Bank Act. We only have six chartered banks in Canada, um, although some would argue that the National Bank is more a, a regional lender within the province of Quebec. It truly is one of the six chartered banks, hence they have a lot of protection. Uh, it's a true oligopoly. Anyway, they take their variable rate quotes in tandem with the Bank of Canada overnight lending rate, as opposed to fixed rate mortgages are actually set and determined uh, by the commercial bonds. So their yield or their return, that is what dictates fixed mortgage rates. Can the lender go out and secure funds at, let's say, 
add in a margin for them to be profitable. Let's say it's a half a percentage point. They secure it 2%. They're happy with a margin of half a percent. Hence, for the next five years, they borrow the money at 2% and they're lending it out to you at two and a half. That's how commercial, that's how commercial bond yields impact fixed mortgage rates. And what's the trend on the commercial bond yields right now? They're going up. We so I, I quickly or a lot, or are they just sort of stepping up in quarter points or how's we, it going? We've had two interest rate hikes amongst the bulk of our lenders in the last 21 days. We had three last night out of our 30 core lenders increase their rates. It's it's starting, Jethro. None of us really know where it's going to go or how quickly it's going to go. But it makes sense that we cannot borrow indefinitely at the rate of inflation. Inflation will be baked into the, co the cost of borrowing. So there's no way that interest rates can stay in the 2% range indefinitely. Yeah, yeah, well, it's a historic lows, right? Yeah. Um, great, well, that's, that's good to know. And uh, we'll keep an eye on the bond yields and see how that goes. Um, you know, it, as rates go up, affordability gets tougher. So um, that might have, well, will have an impact on house prices. Uh, will it cool the market enough to make it a balanced market? I'm not so sure at this point, but um, certainly as it, if it goes forward and continues to, the rates continue to go up, the, the, the market may become a bit more balanced. We are going to head into a uh, tighter inventory area, which is typically December and January. So there will be some houses coming up in, in the Midtown market over the next 30 to 60 days, but it's going to get pretty quiet in December. Uh, and certainly in January. Um, so the current rates, what are the current rates and uh, you know, which lender right now has the, has the best rates? Every, every lender is advertising a five-year fixed rate around 2%, it's just above. Those are always for an insured purchase, meaning the price point has to be under $1 million you're putting down less than 20%. You are incurring an insurance premium. Insurance premiums are with CMHC, Sagan, used to be Genworth, and Canada Guarantee. So when you add that premium, that's how you'll get the lowest possible rate. And that's only available on a purchase. Um, which lender has the best rate? I actually <clears throat> don't know. They're all in such a tight grouping. It almost depends upon the day. When we submit a file, we actually will look at the actual offering of lenders and send our clients to, to the appropriate solution. So you send out uh, sort of a request for a proposal for people's rates, depending on each file and each client. So you can kind of have a sense as to uh, what what that is at a, probably different times during the given day, but each day can be different uh, with the lenders. They change. I guess it depends how much money they have. Jethro, there are several factors. The credit score, known as your, your Beacon Report or your FICO, that's probably the most critical thing. Secondly, particularly with self-employed uh, clients, and we have a lot of them, how are they reporting their income? That impacts a file. And uh, so those are two major factors that are, are in consideration when we look for the best rate. Ironically, we're, we receive rate sheets every single day from the lenders. They're running a five-year fix that they can close in the next 45 days. And you know, if it's this price range or if this credit score. And so it, it changes very rapidly. Historically speaking, rates are very slow to come down and they're very fast to come up. I'm not sure if I shared with you two weeks ago, it was January 2019. I put a friend of mine into a five-year fixed and it was 3.79%. We sent him to a local credit union. That was a very competitive rate at the time. So that goes to show January 2019, we're coming up to January 20, 2022 here uh, in the blink of an eye. And we're talking about a spread of almost 2%. That's, That's a, a major impact on affordability. Yeah, and it's uh, it's shown in the housing market. That's for sure. We've seen uh, house prices go up 
pretty significantly. It, it's uh, in Midtown, anywhere from sort of seven to eleven percent, depending on the specific neighborhood, like Lee Side or Davisville or Sherwood Park or um, even Lawrence Park and uh, and Rosedale. You know, they've everybody's had increases in their in their real estate values. So that's probably a product of of the lending and that representative of that two percent uh change as well which is kind of dramatic mm -hmm. jethro when we talk and knowing that you're a hands-on realtor and you're actually in the field in houses at open houses dealing with clients you know and understand what's happening in the marketplace interest rates are critical but also nothing can really override the powers of supply and demand so you're yeah. you're in the trenches. You see it firsthand. You know exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, one of the things you commented on was the Beacon score. So uh, for all the viewers out there, I was hoping that we'd get into the Beacon score and uh, how credit affects your ability to borrow. So we'll do a deep dive into that in a, a future episode. Um, but for right now, uh, one of the things that helps people sort of um, save a little bit of money is how they pay their mortgages and I've always wondered exactly how much it, how much it saves, but you know I've heard that an accelerated mortgage helps you know reduce your overall cost, but by how much and is it really affordable? It's a great question, and it's it's all it's really part of the educational process when we're working with clients because a lot of people ask this, so it's very timely, Jeffrey. We have people purchasing properties and closings, obviously a lot at the end of each month. But on, on a weekly basis. Anyway, historically, when interest rates were, let's say, closer to 10%, the impact of compounding was much more extreme. Hence, acceleration played more of a role in, in let's call it, historical interest rate ranges. What is the real impact of, of making a bi weekly mortgage payment? What you're actually doing, Jethro, is if you look at it, you're, you're making 26 half monthly payments on an annual basis, or you're making 13 monthly payments on an annual basis. So technically, if you do an accelerated biweekly payment and you pay half the monthly amount, you're actually paying one extra month's amount of payment on an annual basis, and what is the impact? On a traditional 30-year amortization, if you do that over the life of the mortgage, you'll actually drop your amortization down to about 26 years. So you, wow. you can you can shave off about four years, but really, Jethro, the impact is more from the extra principal you're paying on an annual basis. Now, right. when does this make sense for people? If they are paid, on a bi-weekly basis and their pay, their income, matches and corresponds with an ongoing mortgage payment. That's really when it makes the most sense. But if people are paid bi-monthly or on the 15th and the 30th or the 1st and the 15th, or if they're paid on a monthly basis, then it really doesn't make much sense for them to, to set their mortgage payment as accelerated bi-weekly. Well, it certainly affects their cash flow for sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Um, so lastly, I guess, because uh, you're a mortgage broker, you don't work for a bank. Uh, nope. There are there are bank designated um, mortgage representatives out there, but you're a mortgage broker. So you you mentioned earlier you have access to 50 lenders or so. How, how does your role differ from a traditional bank? The, the two major differences, one, we have access to about, well, we have access to many, many lenders. We have chartered banks. Scotia and TD send us rate specials all the time. We have insurance companies like Manulife. Fortunately, we're one of the top 25 brokerages with Manulife, and we have access to their premium products, which is a fantastic offering, particularly for self-employed people. We have access to credit unions, Duca, Meridian. They send us rates all the time. And then there's a group of other lenders. They're not household names. They're all multi-billion dollar corporations. They're actually where you're gonna find probably the most client-friendly terms. The issue is, will their offering match up with what your needs are? That's, that's what requires further discussion. 
The other major uh, difference, Jethro, between a mortgage broker and a bank representative, when we prepare a mortgage package, we have to prepare what is known as the Ontario Disclosure to Borrower. We have to declare in the transaction, are we working for the borrower or are we working for the bank? It's very clear, we put it in writing, we work for the borrower. The counterintuitive thing is all the banks pay us a commission because they want our volumes. Right. Cool. Well, that's helpful. And uh, that gives people a little bit of an opportunity to understand how mortgages work and uh, and how you can work with them. Um, so I think that's that's what we're up to today. Um, you know, the, mor the mortgage rates seem to be on the increase. So... Uh, we'll see how that affects the market overall. And um, I think the next show, we'll try to do a little bit of a deeper dive into beacon scores and how we can change people's or help people change their credit rating in order to secure more uh, beneficial financing, which would allow them to have a, a more a lower rate um, or better terms. So we'll, we'll do a deep dive into that and uh, spend some time on that in the next episode. I wanna thank everybody for for watching and uh, thank Jerome for participating and giving us all this insight into the marketplace. Um, thanks, Jerome. Jethro, thank you very much for having me and uh, I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Wonderful, wonderful. We'll look, look out for that in the uh, near future. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to Jerome or myself and we'll be able to help you out with either mortgages or understanding the real estate market uh, at a pretty in-depth level. So feel free to reach out anytime. Thanks everyone, have a great day. Take care.